it's turtle time. Hello everyone, this is Steve from Cantu Comics. Even if you've been living in a sewer half your life, you have heard of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Leonardo, Michelangelo, Donatello, Raphael, and Master Splinter are pop culture phenomena ever since they originated from their black and white comic panels from Mirage. Created by Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird in 1984, the story was primarily created in parody of popular 80s comic series like Daredevil, New Mutants, and Cerebus. The series borrows heavily from Daredevil specifically as their origin stories are intertwined. When young Matt Murdock saved the old blind man from the truck, the ooze canister that spilled on him also bounced off of a small bowl with four baby turtles in it, shattering it and splashing them with ooze. Behind the scenes of commotion, an intelligent rat named Splinter rescued the turtles and took them into the sewers while unfortunately contaminating himself with ooze. Everyone knows the rest of the origin story, but something you may not have actually noticed is Shredder's Foot Clan bears a striking similarity to the hand in Daredevil and Iron Fist lore. Since the turtles continue to gain popularity throughout the decades, I wanted to share with you some of my nicer Mirage Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle books. I did not include the Archie series or the more modern ones, but will focus primarily on the early run Mirage books. So to start off, I have my very cherished copy of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Street Collector's Guide. Uh, this thing is amazing because this was actually one of the first comic books I'd ever bought, and I didn't traditionally buy it. Uh, the way that I actually got this uh, was back in the day when I was a kid, I had the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle toys. I believe it was by Playmates. So on the back of the box, uh, there was a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle fan club. So they had all the instructions on there. You would send $15 um, and uh, you fill out the form with all your information and you would send it in. So what happened was I received this guy in the mail. Plus I had some miscellaneous, like a little magazine and had like some stickers and uh, like official membership card and stuff. Like it, it was pretty cool. I mean, I was, I was a young kid back then. Like I thought it was awesome. Um, but yeah, this guy was in there. Very cool thing about this is because when I was young, I only knew about the cartoons. I didn't know anything about the comics. Heard people talk about it. They're like, oh, it's kind of violent and stuff. And, and you know, I'm like, well, I, mean, I just know the cartoons. So yeah, when I actually read it, I was like, oh, whoa, you know, this is like all in black and white and I can't tell which turtle's which, you know, because they're all wearing the same color bandana. Uh, even on the cover here, they're all wearing the red bandana like in the original turtle series, but it was pretty cool for, for back then. So up next, I have my copy of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number 10. Uh, there isn't any real significance to this issue. Um, you know, it's not a key or anything, but uh, it's a low number issue and it's number 10 from the original run. Uh, what strikes me of it is this uh, Shredder cover. Uh, I have to go back and see, but this might be one of his, if not his first uh, cover appearances. Uh, I mean, I'm sure he's been on some of the like reprints and stuff, but uh, this is like a, to me, this is a very iconic Shredder cover. So next, I wanted to show off Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number nine. Uh, this one again is, there is no significance, uh, but the cool thing is uh, I actually have like four copies and there's another on the back here. <laughs> Not really sure how I acquired so many. Uh, these are actually pretty nice. Um, may eventually want to grade them. Uh, there's like a little bend in the corner here, but uh, one of these is probably at least a 9.2. Uh, but most of these for you know how old these books are you know it's pretty uh, it's pretty hard to, to find these in really nice condition oh one interesting thing I don't remember the story this was a long time ago uh, but yeah this guy definitely looks like I think these are like they're like time travelers or, or something um, but yeah this dude obviously looks like Professor Xavier uh, I mean probably borrowed some heavy heavy reference from that so next I have a copy of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number eight and kind of like the other one where I had four copies, I, for some reason, I got two copies. <laughs> um, but this is this is a pretty cool book because this has uh, Appearance of Cerebus in here. You know, because Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, uh, you know, that was that's an independent book from back then. And, you know, they it's pretty hard to, to make it on your own. 
and especially uh, Cerebus, they were they were pretty big. Uh, it's like Artvark, I believe, is the, the publisher. So I do have a handful of those books, and even number one of Cerebus is an outrageous amount of money. Not as much as Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number one, but uh, definitely a, a huge like 80s independent comic book. Yeah, it's a it's a pretty nice cover. So next, I have Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number six. Uh, this is a first print. Um, it's, it features these uh, Triceratops guys, or Tricerons, or uh, if I remember correctly in the story, they had uh, their own planet. And I believe they were trying to escape the planet to, to come back to Earth. I think this is also a wraparound cover. Pretty low number, and this copy is... Uh, I have a few color bins on here, uh, so I probably wouldn't, probably wouldn't grade it unless for some reason these get crazy valuable. Um, but yeah, this is number six. The next book that I have to show you guys is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number five. Uh, again, this is also a first print. Uh, it also features a very nice wraparound cover. I don't think there was a particular like key on it. It just uh, it continued the story. I think it was a fugitoid. Uh, it was a pretty intense like story. This is a uh, number five first print. So next up, I have Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number four. This is a second print. Uh, the cool thing about this one, it is a wraparound cover. But in case, like, if you're as old as me and you are familiar with the 8-bit Nintendo Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle game, uh, this is actually the exact same cover art that was used on the box art of the game. So, you know, that game wasn't very good. It was, it was really hard. I, I know I never beat it. Uh, I remember that, like, underwater level with all the seaweed that electrocuted you. That, that was just ridiculous. Um, obviously, they don't make games like that anymore. You know, they, they actually play test it and... <laughs> You know, they, they don't make it as, as difficult as they used to. Um, but yeah, this is a very nice copy. I mean, unfortunately it's a second print. Uh, that's why you got this cover. But to me, it has more sentimental value because it has that nest tie-in with the cover art. So next, I have Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number two, third print. Uh, this is a pretty significant issue. This is the first April O'Neil and also the first Baxter Stockman and the Mousers. My copy here, it's a little beat up because as you're getting up to like number one, two, and three, it's really, really hard to find like really nice copies. Get a lot of like color bends and stuff along the spine. And this one, it's not that bad. I can actually press a lot of this out, um, but there's definitely some cover uh, color breaks. So in this state, it's probably like an eight, um, but I can probably press it to like a maybe eight and a half. I have to. I have to see how, how big these uh, color breaks are. Um, but again, I mean, the third print, so it's uh, not as valuable. It's still worth some money because it's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number two. So now we're getting down to the really, really nice, nice issues that I have. So right here, here's a copy of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number two. It is a second print, but this is a really immaculate copy. Uh, right here, I can actually probably press this as well, uh, but I'm looking at at least like a 9.2. So since like COVID, everyone on eBay has been just selling and reselling all these old Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle books. And number two specifically has been, you know, it's been getting up there, even the second print. So the first print, yeah, I mean, I, it broke a few thousand dollars already for a really high grade. This copy, this might end up, you know, being pretty lucrative down the line, you know, because number one is obviously a blue chip book, but number two, because a lot of people can't even afford a number one. So they're looking here at like number two or even number three, you know, to kind of round out their collections and, you know, have really nice pieces to show. So again, yeah, this is a, this is a really nice book. Okay, so now I have my pride and joy to show off. So I have Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, number one, Unfortunately, it's a second print, but the second print is still very sought after, still has a very low print run. Uh, the very cool thing about this copy is that it's signed and sketched by Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird twice. So I have them here on the front, and then it's also on the inside page. They had also signed it in pen. So again, number one, this is, this is the key book that you want, and you want a first print, which you know, unless you have like thirty, forty thousand dollars, you're not really going to get it, unless you get like a really low grade. Uh, but yeah, this is the book that started it all. 
This is the first Splinter, first Leonardo, first Michelangelo, first Raphael, first Donatello, first Shredder, first everything in the universe, you know, outside of April O'Neil and some of the other big guys like Casey Jones. But um, yeah, like this is the book. What's actually interesting is the story of how I got this book. So, you know, I, I, I go on eBay quite a bit. I'm usually try to like be efficient with my money and I'm looking around, I'm like, at the time, uh, this was when, before the Deadpool movie was out, and there was all the rage on New Mutants 98, and I had already acquired one copy, and I was looking around like, oh, maybe I can find a raw copy somewhere, and then, you know, I can grade it, you know, see what happens. So I came across this lot on eBay, and it had like, uh, I believe it was like 10 or 11 books, just totally random books. Like they were trying to sell the crap out of it. They're just making up stuff like, oh, this this was some like printer error, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, no, it's not. I'm like, you know, I'm not even looking it up. I'm like, this guy's just talking out of his ass. But the two really nice books that were featured was The New Mutants 98. And it was signed by the editor in chief at the time, uh, but he had signed it. And obviously, you know, it's not certified or anything. Um, but I was like, okay. I'm like, that looks, you know, near mint. So I was looking at the price, you know, it's at the time when I found it, it was like $80. I'm like, shit, I'm like, this book's gonna be worth a ton. You know, cause I already had a 9.4 or it's actually behind me here. So I already had like a 9.4. I'm like, like if this gets at least like a 9.2, like 9.4, you know, I can easily pay three, $400 for this lot and that's gonna pay for itself. Um, and then also, you know, this book was also in there and I was like, okay, it looks pretty beat up. I'm like, but you know, I've always wanted a number one. I kept watching, you know, my tactics are, you know, you wait to the end and then you just like, you know, throw a bunch of money at it. So I did win, I believe it was like 330 something dollars. Like at the time, you know, I didn't have my current job. This was, wow, this was like over 10 years ago. Actually, I was very anxious because <laughs> Uh, they hadn't like updated it like I, the auction was already done, already paid for and it was like five, six days later and it hadn't shipped and you know, I was just like bugging the guy. I'm like, hey, you know, when's this going to ship? You know, I, I want these books, you know, and then they're like, oh, yeah, 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 it's going, it's going out. So yeah, once I received it, then like I looked at it, I was like, oh man, like this Turtles book is pretty nice. I'm like, I think this is, you know, this is actually more the cream of the crop than that first Deadpool. Uh, so the first Deadpool was nice. I went ahead and graded it. Uh, it, it came back as a 9.2, so, you know, I broke out even. Because uh, the rest of the books in the lot, like I said, there was just a bunch of kind of garbage books, but there was some Bronze Age and Copper Age books, and they were pretty decent, but nothing really stood out uh, aside from the first Deadpool and this guy. That was a very good investment considering nowadays where even the second print and uh, even this condition, like this is like 2,500, maybe even $3,000 in this condition. So, I mean, that's, you know, that's pretty, pretty good. I mean, I did pretty good with stocks, you know, back in the day, but that's a very sound investment. And because it's a blue chip book, it's just going to keep going up. So yeah, that is uh, my Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number one, second print, signed by Eastman and Peter Laird. Well, that wraps up my top Mirage Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle collection. I have plenty more books in this collection, but I wanted to focus primarily on these specific ones. As you know, I like to end every episode of Cantu Comics with a spotlight on a particular piece of original comic art that I own. Since this episode is ninja themed, this would be a perfect time to go over my Ninja Scroll issue 8, page 7, penciled by John Boy Myers. I purchased this directly from John Boy at Comic Con's Artist Alley over a decade ago. I wasn't familiar with the book at the time but was definitely a fan of the ultra-violent anime movie from about 30 years ago. Now that I think of it, Ninja Scroll was the second true adult anime film that I ever saw. Of course, you know, the first one's Akira, but I remember Ninja Scroll being so enticing to me as I was fascinated by Japanese culture. My prior ninja knowledge came from watching badly dubbed ninja movies, you know, American Ninja series with Michael Dudikoff. Oh man, and those are the days of innocence. Although it was fictional, Ninja Scroll introduced me to the factual lore of Japan's history and the power shifts that the country endured. This story in the comic takes place during the Edo era Tokugawa shogunate control and centers around the main character Jubei. I won't get into the story of the anime in the off chance that you haven't watched or read the story, but this comic series takes place after the events of the movie. 
In this panel page, Jubei is talking to one of the villagers and discussing plans on how to save the women and children of the village and make a stand to protect it. The pencil work is impeccable, as is all of John Boy's art. His lines are so clean and accurate, especially from an older panel page before he had really blown up in popularity. I view his overall style as classic with an anime twist. I was very lucky to purchase this page along with another panel page for 20 bucks each. He even threw in a custom Wolverine trading card sketch because we were chatting for a while. John Boy is a top tier human and takes the time to talk with anyone, either being a comic fan or a comic professional. I have another story I will share with you about the time I was trying to get a comic book made for iBuyPower computers and I approached John Boy to pencil it. But that's going to be a future dedicated episode. So was there anything that I missed? Don't forget to comment and like this video and hit the subscribe button for more original comic art content. This is Steve from Cantu Comics signing off.